In this section, we're going to look at clip loops, known within Sona as groove clips. Sona supports both audio and MIDI groove clips, and I'll be concentrating mainly on audio groove clips, which have their own dedicated edit view, known as the loop construction view. But the basic method of changing either an audio or MIDI clip into a groove clip is the same. MIDI loops can be edited within the piano roll view or staff views. Audio groove clips are a special type of audio clip that contain information about the audio in them. This includes original tempo, a reference pitch, audio transients, and the number of beats they contain. This will allow them to adjust the pitch and tempo changes in a project automatically. Clips that have audio snap or V-vocal on them cannot be converted into groove clips. The default project pitch is set from the project menu. Select your choice from the set default groove clip pitch. This sets the project pitch. Note that the project pitch is not necessarily the same as the project's key setting and they're independent of each other. Sona comes with many of its own loops, but we can also create our own from any audio clip. I have a simple audio clip loaded here and we can convert it to a groove clip by selecting it and pressing Ctrl L or right clicking on the clip and selecting Groove Clip Looping. Once a clip is a groove loop, it can be rolled out along the timeline and the loop will repeat for the length of the clip. When I select the loop and press Ctrl L, the loop option is off and the clip will behave as a regular auto clip once more and can be slip edited. Note however, it can no longer be rolled out. If a groove clip is selected here in a track view, Options and information about the clip are available in the Clip Inspector, so there's no need to open the Loop Construction View unless you want to perform more complex edits on the clip. Access the Clip Inspector by pressing Shift-I and clicking on the Groove Clip section. The Looping checkbox turns looping on or off. Note that existing loops such as Rex files ignore this setting and will remain loops until they are bounced. The Stretch to Tempo checkbox forces the clip to follow project tempo. This uses the number of beats in the clip and the original tempo to make the necessary changes. Note that looping and stretch to tempo are mutually exclusive. Beats in clip is the number of beats that Sona has detected. If this needs to be changed, the looping option needs to be turned on. The original tempo field is the tempo of the project in which the clip was recorded. To change this field, stretch to tempo needs to be checked. The follow pitch checkbox controls whether the clip follows the project's pitch or not. Markers in the project can also have their groove clip pitch field set to change a clip's pitch in a project. The reference note is the pitch at which the original clip was recorded and is used to calculate the pitch change required to follow project pitch. You can change that here. For example, if a project's pitch is C and this field is A, the clip will be transposed up three semitones. The pitch field allows the transposition to be set independently from the project pitch and fine pitch is there for fine tuning changes. So let's open the loop construction view and have a look at it. It's possible to open the view by selecting the clip and then selecting main menu, views, loop construction view, or pressing Alt plus 7. It's also possible to double click on the clip, which will open the loop construction view in the multi-dock, as this is the default double click action for audio clips. Default behavior for double clicking can be changed in the track view options menu, under the click behavior, double click submenu, audio clips. The view opens in the multi-dock, which can be maximized by pressing Shift D. I'm going to hide the inspector by pressing I. In the center of the view, we can see the waveform with a couple of envelopes showing and red slice markers along the time ruler. We'll look at those in detail shortly. At the top of the view, we have the loop views menu. From here, it's possible to save the clip, turn looping on and stretching on and off, plus inspect the loop properties. These are the same properties that we looked at in the Groove Clip Inspector view, plus information on the source clip. The Slice menu allows markers to be reset, 
access to the pan gain and pitch envelopes, as well as navigate the slices. The slices are the segments between the markers. We'll see these in a second. Options are there for auto previewing slices and whether that preview loops or not. It's also possible to set the preview bus here. Controls on the toolbar allow for playback and stop of the loop and whether groove looping is enabled or not. The red marks with the accompanying lines are markers and markers are the points at which timing is preserved and too few or too many may create audio artifacts. Resolution sets the resolution for the creation of automatic markers. Setting this at eighths, for example, will create eight markers per measure. Increasing it to sixteenths creates sixteen per measure, or half notes, two per measure. Threshold sets the sensitivity of the transient detection and can be used to filter transients. Increasing this number increases the number of transients detected, and decreasing reduces them. But if a resolution is set, there will always be at least the number of slice markers specified there, regardless of this setting. Using threshold with no slice selected, will create markers at transient points relative to the threshold setting. Use either or a combination of these two methods to automatically create the marker positions that you need. Alternatively, markers can be moved or created manually. A moved marker will be coloured purple, whereas automatic ones are red. Click drag a marker to move it. A marker is created by double clicking the top half of the ruler at the point where we want the marker. Markers are deleted by selecting the Erase tool, which can be done by holding F10, and clicking on the marker, which will show as a marker outline once it's deleted. Any automatic markers that have been moved or deleted can be restored to their original positions by selecting Reset Markers from the Slice menu. Beats per minute and the pitch tools are the same as those that we looked at in the inspector. The audio scaling can be changed in the same way as we saw in exploring the track view. The ruler can be changed from samples to beats by double clicking in the lower half of it. Let's look at some basic loop editing. As we heard earlier, it's a simple guitar clip. I'm going to use the control plus the left arrow key to zoom out and we can see this erroneous chord strikes at the end of the clip. So I'm going to start by slip editing that out. To do that, I need to turn the looping off. Notice that as I slip edit, the edited bit turns dark grey. Once that's done, I'll re-enable looping. Clicking on the loop button will create a warning that hidden data is about to be discarded. That's the end of the clip we've just slip edited. Click on OK. And I'm going to turn off the resolution field. And if need be, adjust the threshold so a marker is placed at the beginning of each chord. Now as long as the auto preview option is on, we can audition each slice to make sure the beat markers are in the correct places. It's possible to play the loop through by clicking on the play button. Let's look at changing the pitch in a few places to create a different feel. To do that, we we'll use the pitch envelope, which can be displayed by checking it from the slice menu. Simply click and drag up or down to change it. The movement is in semitones. Now let's have a listen through.
increasing is exactly the same. I'm going to add in a few manual markers and then use the gain envelope to create a staccato effect. Remember manual markers are added by double clicking. Once that's done, I'll drag the gain envelope down on some of the longer chord strikes. We'll play that through as I'm adjusting it. I'll turn on the pan envelope and alternate the panning from side to side. Maybe not fully left and right. Once we're happy with the result, we close or minimize the loop construction view, and then we can roll the loop out as required. Hopefully that simple idea will give you a few ideas of your own.